bills and the motion are now open for motion for consideration of the bills are now open for discussion mani anand sharma ji thoda sa sir the two bills that have been brought tab put together and are being discussed together that's the delhi international arbitration center and the arbitration and conciliation amendment bill 2019 please uh sukhendu ji uh, the desk will take let let anand ji speak please anand ji please so the minister honorable minister has already explained the purpose and the objective and that's there in the memorandum also this is part of the bill that has been moved there cannot be two views when it comes to improving arbitration infrastructure and the entire ecosystem in our country being one of the largest economies the sixth largest seventh largest to be precise it's important for india to create that ecosystem to reassure the investors foreign investors domestic investors and all those who are engaged in the commercial exercise for the expeditious settlement of the commercial disputes so there are efforts that have been made over decades by governments corporations and legal profession trying for improving the entire system sir if there is so much of noise right in front of me it's impossible babu <laughs> there has to be some order yes babu ji but all these efforts have met with failure the minister i'm sure is conscious why is because of the inadequate infrastructure facilities for arbitration the uncertainty of laws unconscionable delays and ambiguous judgments that's a that's a fact various governments have tried it's not a question of the present government bringing these bills in the past also efforts were made to improve the laws but the desired results were never achieved excuse me hello what is sukhendu sukhendu babu ne bahas chal rahe the baat ha anand ji bol now i think you should resolve if there are issues no no he, these issues should be resolved if he has issues those issues must be resolved time there is some dispute somewhere i think it's regarding time mechanism they are uh, correcting it <laughs> right anand ji please anand ji bol sir now the question should be arbitrated accredited yes the first is the issue of the bill that we have brought for the new delhi center and the minister has explained the reasons why the alternative uh, center has not succeeded alternative dispute resolution mechanism that has been there for decades or the number of years that the honorable minister has said well there are many observations on that in addition to the observations made by the honorable minister that it is actually did not take off due to government's obduracy as well as the fact that the initial law had some lacune i will concede to that but when it comes to the arbitration award sir there is a real issue here that the government is the biggest litigator and what has happened It's a matter of fact. 
that whenever the arbitration awards go against the government or a PSU, and in recent memory they have been big ones, whether it's the ONGC Reliance one, Tata Docomo ones, is the government which then litigates and goes to the court. So one has to be very fair and objective when it comes to the reasons or the factors that have led to this situation or the failure even of the alternate dispute resolution mechanism. Internationally, the governments keep away when it comes to arbitration. It's a good, good intention that you want India to be the international hub and why not? Minister referred to London, Singapore, yes. And even our own entities, our PSUs, or our corporates, then finally have to go there. Or it is inbuilt in the memorandums of understanding or the agreements or the investors' agreement that which is the, will be the place of arbitration. Now that is again an issue which I want to draw Honorable Minister's attention to because this is not something which has been addressed in the bill which you have brought. Because you are referring to the place. Now there are many judgments, even of our own Supreme Court, many judgments of courts in other countries on this particular matter. And even Singapore has realized, and that's why they are moving away from it, that once you use the word place, then it's the application of the laws of that country. So whether it should be place or the seat of arbitration, that is what is being internationally discussed and debated for long. And if you are bring, going to bring about a qualitative change and improvement, you need to address this issue so that what you give actually is better or equivalent to what is being offered by the International Arbitration Center, which the Honorable Minister referred to. I'm afraid it is found wanting there. Minister referred to the Siddhi Krishna report. I would like to ask, what prevented the government to accept the recommendations in full? You have accepted some, but there are some rec important recommendations that you have excluded. There's the undefined scope, and that is a bad law. The scope of the powers of the arbitration of Council of India, you have not at all defined. Who will make? And the words which are used are that the ACI will make policies. Policies are not made by the Arbitration Council. You have to define the scope. Rules can be framed thereafter, but the scope cannot be left undefined. And this may pose, I'm afraid, practical problems and defeat the very purpose of the bill. It also does not address the real possibility of delays in completing the arbitration since it proposes a 12-month period would now begin from the completion of the proceedings and not from the date of reference. So after the completion of the pleadings, which may take time, and there has to be a time limit, but after that, there is, that time limit is there. Earlier it was not there. We will support whatsoever is the positive thing. But is that 12 month upon the completion of pleadings Good time, because delays are something which investors, governments, corp corporates, and any institution which is engaged would avoid. But that will add to delays. What is equally intriguing, that uh, 
the international arbitration have been excluded from the time limit. Why? The minister need to educate the house about that. Because most of the arbitration, not all which involve the government of India or the PSUs, but Indian corporate entities or the foreign investors happen to be international in nature, in character. So if you want to become an attractive hub as a country for these dispute resolutions or arbitration, then why not have some kind of a defined time frame? So there are many issues uh, which we have with when it comes to the arbitration in this country. There is no reservoir of professionals, trained professionals in the art of arbitration in India. Now the bill says that they will create an academy, they will try to train people, but as of now there is a dearth. And that's why the choice falls on retired judges, as the minister himself said. And the fact is, with due respect, that when it comes to the alternate dispute resolution center, the Honorable Supreme Court has itself been very keen and rightly so, but at the same time, there are certain observations there. That you have no other choice but retired judges or retired civil servants. Once you have trained professionals, you will inspire more trust and confidence of the investors Supreme Court itself has made, in fact, a negative observation on engaging judges. It's interesting. And the Supreme Court has said that it's costly. It's not my observation. They've also said that when you appoint them, whether it was a serving judge unhappy with someone, I have no knowledge of that, that they have a tendency to drag. So it's important for arbitration to follow certain principles. To my mind, the first should be time-bound, result-oriented, and disciplined for India to become as a hub of international arbitration. I have already commented or given my views that you should call it a seat and not a place because of the international litigations that have taken place. Second is the respecting the sanctity of the contracts and honoring the awards which are vital to becoming an arbitration hub. For that, the mindset has to be one of compliance. We don't have that mindset of compliance. And once the arbitration award comes, then the litigation starts and the pendency, given the pendency of the cases in the honorable courts, there are more t delays and you cannot bound the honorable courts, whether the Supreme Court or the High Courts, that you have to, we have now put a time limit, it's time bound proceedings, that that shall happen. That the minister needs to explain because the, we have a history, long history, of the government challenging the awards, because this is the biggest litigator. So the, finally the government would say it should be time bound, but then the government will also become the litigator and challenge every possible award which goes against the government and that will take a while for the mindset to change. And the third issue is of independent and expert uh, arbitrators, they are much needed. And the commercial Certainty, there has to be stability, commercial certainty, and also to uphold the sanctity of the awards that are made. Sir, 
as I had said right in the beginning, that the government should at least assure all concerned stakeholders that they would not be too much in controlling or interfering when it comes to such dispute resolution or arbitration. Whether this bill does that, I'm afraid it does not. Honorable Minister referred to Section 26, and it's about the operation, that it will not apply to the past cases. Say there is a reason, and we'll be grateful if the Minister explains, whether it is that many PSUs heavily lost in arbitration awards heavily and thereafter this issue was taken up on the petitions by the government to bring in a new clause there are certain observations of the Bombay High Court on this that you exclude the past those cases on which there have been serious challenges made. Now, since there are observations of a High Court which have not been overruled, particularly about this clause, that it would not apply to the old arbitration, I would say, unless and until this is clarified today, it will make a mockery of the arbitration process, and it will also deny the Indian industry, tens of thousands of crores that they have won in arbitration awards. So whether there is any justification or would the government rethink? So third is, there's a, you have a chairperson, again a government appointee, there's, this is a problem. You create a mechanism, you want to be an international hub, you want everybody to come to you for arbitration, but you have a totally government-controlled and dominated Arbitration Council of India which is set up. Who all are theirs? Yes, we understand the honorable judges will be there because you don't have the trained people. So the council will consist as in the composition of the Arbitration Council. A person who has been a judge of the Supreme Court or Chief Justice of the High Court or a judge of a High Court or an eminent person having special knowledge. Fine. An eminent arbitration practitioner having substantial knowledge. We have no objection to that. An eminent academician having experience. Good luck. There's a positive thinking and I would support that. But then, sir, it goes on and brings in three secretaries to the Government of India. Secretary to the Government of India and the Department of Legal Affairs. Secretary to the Government of India and the Department of Expenditure. The Chief Executive Officer will be Member Secretary X official. So there are three actually the serving government secretaries which you bring in. How would you reassure the international community, commercial entities, professionals, about the fairness of your processes that the governments or government of India, being the biggest litigator, will have a hands-off approach when it comes to arbitration proceedings. If you pack it with the government nominees, I'm not talking of referring to the retired judges or chief justice and all, or experts, but you need to have a rethink there. Merely by having this bill, bring, bringing in the changes or the amendments, last amendments were in 2015, in principle supporting the bill, I would request the government and the Honorable Minister 
to reflect there is always space and scope for improvement if it's a step forward then do it in a manner that it sends a message which resonates with the stakeholders and not otherwise thank you sir thank you